the things we haven't touched upon is that the homeschool connection with our uh, English language learners or we have predominantly Spanish speaking families. And we did put some supports in place to help, help them as well. So it, like for our technical support, it was available in both English and Spanish, which was something new pro, um, during the pandemic. But it was that was something that was useful to have a technician who can help all families in the district. Well, because before we weren't reaching out directly to family homes, if a child had an issue with their device, when they came to school, there was enough people around to help. Here, yeah. now we have elementary families calling in who were non-English speaking. We realized right away, okay, we need a way to support students and get them these families <coughs> engaged. And so we did hire a dedicated person who was bilingual, which has been a great asset for us. There wasn't that big of a need before, um, so we didn't need to address that because we had internal support, but that was one thing that did change for us and it's been a, a great asset. We always were aware, but I think we became more sensitive to, to those specific needs as well. Um, and we might not have, definitely our, we had an FSL team in place that was fully bilingual, but, and that typically would have been our outreach arm, but when their students aren't in school, we're really thinking through then how are we communicating and obviously parent square can help us translate some of the messages but also even if it's a tech question or like who's our staff person who's going to speak spanish on the tech support line um some of those those items i think were were critical and i think i think i i guess i would say the the most important aspect here is that I think all of us, and I say all teachers, administrators now are, are thinking like, I think the parent teacher conferences opened our eyes that like our parent, they, they do care, they want to be involved, but they may have to take an hour off of work to come to a parent teacher conference, or they may have to get a ride to the parent teacher conference. Why are we making it more if what we really want is their participation, like how do we make it as easy as possible for them to participate. So for years, we would say, well, maybe they didn't have a positive experience at school, and that's why they're not coming. No, what we saw here is they're not coming is because they're working multiple jobs to make ends meet, and they may need, they have one car or one vehicle, and the car is hopping around to get their kids to hear that. Like, so some of our, our own thoughts, kind of like, we thought we were doing a pretty good job, but we need to even be more sensitive to the needs of, of our families. Mm. One of the things that our teachers did for the kindergarten families this year is they did overview nights for the parents of the software program students would be using because you know in the past or the students were with us and we didn't say to the parent, oh, we're using Imagine Learning and this is its purpose and this is what your child should be doing. Um, and that was very well attended and very well received, which, which was nice to see. But parents were very eager to learn more, especially kindergarten parents in the beginning of this year, if, especially if they're distance learners. They weren't coming to the school, um, but it was a way for them to be connected as well. Mm -hmm.